is? Yeah. I had no idea. How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Um, I'm here at this new construction house. I ain't got no power. We're actually running off a generator, but there's some stuff here I just could not get by without showing. Um, if you guys do even halfway quality work, you should pat yourself on the back because you're doing a good job compared to a lot of things that I've seen since I've been here in Tucson. I mean, in, back in Tennessee, there's some, how's it going, Bobby? There's some pretty, pretty shoddy work that I've seen here in Tennessee. And this right here pretty much takes the cake. So I just wanted to point some stuff out. How's it going, Max? Hope you're enjoying your bags. I'm gonna turn this camera around here and just point a few things out real fast. So this bottom step right here on the landing, you see the steps going up there. I'll show you a few things on that right now. But this right here has a little overhang where they rolled and stapled down there. You can really plainly see the staple marks right there. And also, uh, look at the edges of the carpet right there. They're just showing. And look at the edge of that step right there. Nothing was even addressed about that whatsoever. They just left that. And uh, right here, they didn't even obviously check their work. This These staples are not even holding anything. There's like where it's rolled and stapled, it's just there. A big dip in right there. Um, these steps are like really, really pathetic. I can't believe people even get away with stuff like this. Uh, look at all of these steps are cut too big. Look in the corners right there. They're, it's like running out on the side of the wall right there. Look at this one right here. I don't know if you can see that. That's like, look at that. I can't believe that people get away with stuff like that. This step right here is not even, let me get a down view. Look how far away, look, that's not even in the corner at all. They actually tack stripped it. The tack strip is way back here. Therefore, their crease, they just kind of tried to crease it with a stair tool, which should be back here, but it's way up here where the edge of the tack strip is. Uh, you can plainly see staple marks in your riser right there, the uh, underneath of the bull nose, one, two, three, four, the staples are so spaced out that that's what makes them stand out so much. Um, as you noticed, whenever I did the video about the transition strip, I mean, rolling and stapling, whenever you do your staple gun, you can make it look really good if, um, if you just put your staples close together, that stops them from standing out like a sore thumb because then it just looks like a steady row and a steady crease in the, in the carpet. One more thing right here on this landing I wanted to point out before I go upstairs. Watch this right here. I'm just gonna barely push on the edge of this watch. Look at that. I can just push a wrinkle right up in that. I don't even think that they stretched that or kicked it at all, it's just laying there, literally. Look at that. Anyway, let's run upstairs, take a look at some stuff up here. And I am going to do a video here really soon on tack strip placement because that is a really uh, critical uh, step to getting good look around the edges of your walls. And you can see right here, this is a brand new house, it's new construction. They ain't even finished it yet. Like I said, they don't even have power or anything hooked up to it. <sighs> yeah, I believe that. Bobby, I believe that. Uh, uh, look right here around the edges, see that? The gap underneath the baseboard. No doubt the baseboards are raised up, but they're raised up like uh, 5 eighths of an inch. So your carpet is plenty thick enough. Um, how's it going, Anthony? Carpet's plenty thick enough. Look over here on this side. Look at that. Carpet is plenty thick enough to cover that gap if they had not a place to tack strip way out here. They got, look, this is literally the edge of the tack strip. So if they had scooted that up, that gap would not even be there at all, okay? Look, you can see it's so high, you can see the edge of the carpet right there. Just barely is even underneath of the baseboard. Um, one thing I noticed in here, uh, this was actually humped up right here. You can still see just a little hump and I stopped messing with it. I came over to fill of it and there is actually a tack strip nail right there that's not even beat down, which is 
causing the carpet to not even go down. Look at that. I'm sorry if I ain't got a whole lot of light. There is the edge of the carpet right there. It's not even under. They just had the nap fluffed up to where it would get under there. Look. Absolutely no stretch whatsoever. And uh, the other side is the exact same way. The carpet edging is right there. That's, I just can't, I can't get over that people get by with stuff like this in new construction. And uh, I don't know who done this or else I would not even feel comfortable uh, talking about the job like this because I don't want to point fingers at no individual just as a uh, carpet group in whole. Uh, right here, this is the first time I've seen this. I've seen a dip over here, so I just came and felt there is no tack strip right between my fingers. They got a huge space. Look here. Look at that. And you can see how far away that is. So even if you cut your tack strip short, at least take your pad out here to fill up that void because I just turned around and seen a dip and decided to fill it. And that's exactly what the deal is right there. They did not place their tack strip properly and they left a big dip right there. And you can tell you didn't even hear it snap on the tack strip whenever I just then pulled the corner up because it did not even have no stretch on it whatsoever. If you got a little snapping on your tack strip and you try to pull it up, that means it's got at least a little bit of a stretch. That carpet had no sound whatsoever. It was just literally setting on the tack strip, had zero stretch on it whatsoever. Um, in here, I can't show you nothing in here because it's too dark. Uh, look right here. And I, I hope you guys can pick something up from this and try to avoid doing stuff like this by pointing this out. Look at the seam right there. Again, these are a brand new house okay this is brand new install they this is everything is new and people are getting away with doing work like that here in tennessee it blows my mind i can't believe it i would have been fired i wouldn't even attempt stuff like this just for the sake of the people i want i couldn't do somebody like that look at the dip in that corner again where the tax strip is cut short there's nothing right there so the corner just falls down there's no tax strip in the corner I always will start my tack strip in the corners and run it to the other way. And if there is going to be a small, I said small, a small gap in between where the tack strip meets the corner, I'll slide it down and have it fit to the corner good and then have just a small gap in between each piece of tack strip. By no means can you get by with an inch or two inch gap in between the tack strips. That's pitiful. Uh, again, let's look at these other couple of steps right here. So, look at here. I don't know if you can see that or not. Let's see here. Try to get this where you can see it. Anyway, this is just all bubbled out right here. Absolutely no, nothing, nothing at all tight about that at all. Look at this. Rolled and stapled a big bulge right there, and then it's just flat down right there. Uh... I hey, appreciate it. Can you grab the... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Look at the front of this step. It's pathetic. Um, count yourself a good installer if... Well, I don't even know. I can't even say that. Because you don't even have to do a good job and still do better than this. So I was going to look at here. And let's listen to this. Look. It's just sitting there. has no stretch on it whatsoever. Again, I noticed the corner drop down there. There's no tack strip right here to jack this carpet up. It should look like that. You guys know that. Anyway, um, again, you can see all around the edges, it looks like a black line. There is another seam right there. Uh, around the edges over here. Looky here. And look at all the marks. Look at that. That's not no stretcher marks. Look at this. This is kicker. Somebody kick this in. That is by no means stretcher marks at all. I've got enough sense to know stretcher marks versus kicker marks, and this is no 
stretch of marks whatsoever. Look, look at that. Homeowners usually have one year punch list. Uh, anyway, so we're just downstairs working on some LVP and today i started it yesterday afternoon i didn't get an early start and then i had to go to another job this morning and come back over here this afternoon again so i ain't had a whole lot of time over here yet on this job but this afternoon as i was taking a break i decided to walk up here and check out the carpet job because i haven't been up here yet so uh, i wanted to ask you guys about this product right here let me turn this around yeah i know no vacuuming that's what i said uh on my other video about for the young people nobody i mean nobody vacuums around here so that's one up that's an easy easy way to improve yourself and set yourself apart from everybody else i just vacuum you know what i'm saying anyway let me turn this around i want to ask about this lvp right here so anytime i've ever done any of this stuff that has that look to it right there it is absolute garbage this is a drop and lock system here on the ends of these and i want to know what you guys think if i am just not no good at this stuff or what but um i mean it's coming together and stuff like that but i don't like the way it goes together i think it's really really cheaply made if you guys install this kind of mess leave a comment tell me what you think about this kind of uh LVP because every time I've installed it, I think it's garbage. So anyway, I just wanted to, yeah, I absolutely agree. It's like a almost, almost like a foam. The backing is by no, it, it might be rubber. I mean, not rubber, but vinyl or whatever. Yeah, chips easy. Uh, glue the tongues on the last row for drop lock. Yep. Okay, look at that. So it even looks like a foam or something on the inside of that stuff. See that where I just break it? It's a very, very poor uh, bottom surface on that LVP there. Very, very poor. The back of it don't look bad because it's all slick and stuff, but you can definitely see from the granules right there look at that it just looks like a piece of styrofoam and it is about as strong as a piece of styrofoam too i don't know what brand it is these boxes are plain white they're plain white boxes so i don't know what brand it is but anyway every time i've used this particular product it's really really cheap and that's probably why these people are putting it in this new house just to have something uh go in it to look nice it does look nice no doubt about that look here i'll turn around see it is a nice looking floor no doubt about it but it's just very very cheap anyway i just wanted to talk about that carpet for a second it's been a few minutes since i put a video up uh it is a personal single or a rental i'm not sure about that floor uh, this guy's a pretty well-known builder here in this area, so I don't think it's going to be a rental. It's in a pretty nice area and stuff like that, so it's probably going to be something to sell. But anyway, it's, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, I wanted to get something up. It's been a while since I've been up here. I did get a little bit more progress done on my studio so hopefully i got plenty of, i got a bunch more footage that i just got to get put together and stuff like that i've been working quite regularly so anyway i got a lot of stuff recorded to get put up for you guys about some uh underlayment and so forth like that whenever i done my kitchen uh came late did you pay uh uh lay that floor i laid the uh LVP here. I did not lay the carpet upstairs. That's what I was showing there. Uh, anyway, I just wanted to point that stuff out. So I'm going to get off here, clean my stuff up, and get out of here. It's halfway early, so I'll have a halfway early evening this afternoon. Thanks for tuning in, and FBSB is out.